One of the most highlighted trades was D'Angelo Russell being traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves in exchange for Andrew Wiggins and two future draft picks. So what do you guys feel about this trade? Um, as you mentioned, it was the highlight of the day. Mm -hmm. It was the biggest, biggest uh, names recognition-wise, like, you know, between two players where everybody knew who these guys were. Right. Lottery picks. Andrew Wiggins really hasn't panned out in Minnesota. D'Angelo Russell was on his fourth team, but obviously we see him developing. Right. Um, but more importantly, now it gives D'Angelo a chance to really partner up with another young star of the game in Carl Anthony Towns. Mm -hmm. Both those guys under 25 years old, both those guys are current and future All-Stars. Uh, they're building something special there, and hopefully it's enough to keep Carl Anthony Towns in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah I mean, he, he's got a legitimate big man uh, that he can kick it to who can also step out and shoot the three. I think it's going to make a nice little one-two punch uh, if, if they can actually keep them together moving forward. Um, I, don't, I, I mean, they could they could be kind of be the rivals for Luka and, uh, and KP. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that would be a nice little matchup seeing two, two of the young guards and two of the, the you know, top young bigs uh, going at each other. As far as Golden State goes, we, we know that was a throw-in um, just, you know, in the whole Kevin Durant uh, moving to Brooklyn situation. Right. And I mean, realistically, you can kind of plug in a lot of guys in that system once everybody comes back healthy. I mean, you got Steph Clay out there and Draymond together healthy. Yeah. I think that Wiggins should be able to excel mm -hmm. in in that um, that lineup. But again, it's Wiggins, so you know, I, I, he hasn't done enough for me just yet to really give him a stamp. But again, I mean, you got. Uh, back-to-back -back MVP, you got three-time champions that are going to come back next season and you throw him in at the small forward spot, yeah. it'll be good for him. Yeah, it's definitely a hard call right now because Golden State had a really challenging year. And so I agree with you when everyone's back healthy. Mm -hmm. um, I think Wiggins would be a good addition to Golden State. So I'm looking forward to seeing Golden State, you know, getting it together because it's been a struggle. No, I agree. Um, I think when, he, when they get everyone back, Steph is mm -hmm. set to come back in March. Yeah. Clay is probably going to sit out the rest of this season and come back next year. Right. Obviously, Draymond's there. They're going to have a high draft pick this year because they've had such a bad season. Mm -hmm. Wiggins can fit into the role that Harrison Barnes played for this team a few years ago during yeah. their early title run. Um, and he'll be a guy who I think he'll fit in because he's very passive already, super athletic. No one's ever denied his talent. He's just never been assertive enough to really take that next step. Yeah. Uh, so with Golden State, he'll probably fit in. Uh, for D'Angelo, you know, some people will say, oh, he's on his fourth team. But all of it really isn't his fault. As, as Tripp mentioned earlier, uh, him leaving Brooklyn was more of a business decision. Right. Brooklyn would have loved to keep him, yeah. but they had the opportunity to go get Kyrie and Kevin Durant. And when you get that chance, even Ky yeah. even you know D'Angelo's admitted it, they had to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think this is a good landing spot for him. I hope Minnesota can figure out a way to make it work with these two young guys. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Przingis. All three of those guys were in the same draft. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of shows how the league has changed because those guys are all very young, still on their rookie contracts, Yet, Przingis is on his second team, D'Angelo's on his fourth team, and Carl Anthony Towns before today was already trying to position to get on his second team. Yeah. So we, we're seeing a lot of changes and a lot of movement around the league. Yeah. I think Wiggins actually can kind of change the narrative as well right now. He has the perfect opportunity being in Golden State, and they pretty much have no other offensive options at this point now that D'Angelo Russell is on his way to Minnesota. So he could actually really showcase himself this season mm -hmm. and kind of and, and really just go in because, again, nobody else is there that's going to score the basketball. So he right. can do what he wants. He's right. going to have the green light. Right. What other trades uh, were some of your favorites? It was, it, was a, it was a lot of movement today. Um, I liked Andre Iguodala going to Miami along with Jay Crowder. Mm -hmm. Miami's kind of been a surprise team this year. Very competitive. They're in the top half of the Eastern Conference. Now you add two gritty, tough defenders. One of those guys in Iguodala, who's a multiple-time champion, um, to go with Jimmy Butler, to go with Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, and all those young guys they have there. Pat Riley's doing it again. He's, he's finding a way to keep his team competitive. And the East is so wide open. Philadelphia's been a little disappointing. Uh, Milwaukee obviously looks like the best team in the league. But... Aside after Milwaukee, it's really open, and, and Miami could now become that second best team in the Eastern Conference. Right. I was surprised. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Um, I was surprised at seeing um, Andre Drummond, who was upset about his trade because, <laughs> as we spoke earlier, it is a business. <laughs> and so he hopped on Twitter and basically was like, "I feel betrayed." In the NBA, is you know they don't have no loyalty, no friends, and I was just shocked because one, 
every time I just see people who are professional athletes, it's like you should be blessed to even be in that predicament. But getting traded, I mean, that's just a part of the business. That's a part of the game. So yeah. I don't know. I, I felt just uneasy even about that tweet. Like, what do you complain? I, don't, I have no idea what Andre <laughs> Drummond is upset about. You don't want Andre, to go to Cleveland, maybe? Andre, but he, <laughs> that might have been it. if that's the case, then you just say, hey, look, you but, know, it is what it is. And you just keep your mouth shut. Yeah. He can right. opt out of his contract after this year. Yeah. So yeah. for him to start whining about, oh, now I know it's truly a business. Bro, you weren't going to re-sign with the Pistons anyway. Yeah. You were going to test the market. And you didn't know it was a business prior to this move? Right. That's what I I'm mean, saying. Didn't you not see De, um, DeRozan get traded to... <laughs> from from Toronto, I mean... To the Spurs? Right. His so. teammate, I mean, he's injured right now, but his teammate, Blake Griffin, mm -hmm. yeah. who spent most of his career with the Clippers yeah. and got traded to the Pistons. It's a business. You were going to opt out of your deal anyway to become a free agent and, yeah. and try to get the max money this upcoming summer. Yeah. So what does it matter? You're gonna to go to Cleveland for a few months. Yeah, that, I know. I know it's not the no greatest sense. situation. Yeah. But come on. And so the New York Knicks also fire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah, <laughs> GM Steve about. Mills. So I mean, what do you guys feel about his replacement, the new president? Um, Rose. Well, there's rumors of um, former agent mm -hmm. Leon Rose taking over that that title with the Knicks. Um, mm -hmm. Listen, I, there are other guys I would prefer for the job, but I'm not going to knock Leon, Leon Rose for the, for this position just mm -hmm. because it is a yeah. different way of thinking. I, I, I can yeah. understand what the Knicks are thinking. They want to bring an agent in. They want to bring somebody who has closer ties to the players right. and has a better feel for, for the league. Um, we see it worked in Golden State yeah. when, when they brought in their former agent as GM and president. Yeah. We've seen it with Rob Palenka now in L.A. Right. Is that um, the new wave now? Uh, we're, we're, you I know, believe it is. GMs are going to start getting, the traditional GMs are going to start getting passed over for agents that are making that transition. I, I think it's going to be a serious discussion because not only are we seeing it in the NBA, but we're seeing it in Major League Baseball as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Mets general manager was a former agent. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of these owners are starting to realize that they are completely out of touch with the players yeah. and they need someone who has a, a better feel for it. Mm -hmm. um, and really quickly, just to make this point before I pass it over, for James Dolan, He's got to understand how badly he's perceived by the entire league. Yeah. So you've got to yeah. have somebody in there that the players are at least willing to sit down and talk with. Because yeah. there's not one player in this league who wants to take a meeting with James Dolan. Yeah. So at yeah. least Leon Rose, with his connections with World Wide West coming in, mm -hmm. at least they can say to the guys, look, you're going to be dealing with me. You're not dealing with Dolan. Right. And maybe it'll maybe. make things better. I, maybe. I think, <laughs> maybe. I completely agree with your point. I think sometimes the agents are obviously more in tune with the players. You also know these players personally and could probably – really tell what city is best for them, what style of play. So I think, um, to your question of, is this going to be the new wave, I think it's a good direction to go in. Yeah, again, because like you said, you, you have that connection already right. with the players. And, you know, as an agent, well, I mean, you'd hope your agent has your best interest at heart. Yeah. But, you know, as Some far know, as right. a lot of these, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, when you look at these guys that are like mid-tier guys and they get these crazy contracts, you know, they, they have a little appreciation for the agent. So, again, like you said, Eric, they'll at least give them the time of day to say, all right, you know what, mm -hmm. I know who Dolan is. I really don't want to mess with this dude, but... You got me that hundred million, you know, that last time around. Mm -hmm. So I at least, you know, come to the table, sit down, right. and, and maybe we can go from there. Yeah. Right. The relationship's already built, um, and also to just like swing back to a convo we've had previously mm -hmm. about again just thinking differently and trying to present new ideas. Yeah. Again, we see it with the NBA. We had a, a long discussion about why there are no black men within the front office of the NFL. Mm -hmm. <laughs> seeing the NBA finding new ways and being creative. Yeah. Like, you don't have to be the traditional GM. Mm -hmm. Your background doesn't have to be that you sat in the front office for 20 years. Yeah. And the NBA is like, if you got those connections and we feel that you bring enough creativity to the mm -hmm. job, yeah. you can land a job. And I think that's what's happening with Leon Rose. He's yeah. built up a reputation. He was LeBron's original agent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know about the, the connections and the reach that World Wide West has, yeah. whether yeah. it's sneaker deals, off-the-court money, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. negotiating new contracts. So to have those guys in the building, it is a better look. As a Knicks fan, and it's New York already, right. so that's yeah. just going to double right. down. Right. As I a Knicks fan, the again, they weren't my first choice, but I, I like the the creativity yeah. and to think outside the box and say, let's bring some guys who have better connections. Well, I think even being, you know, we always talk about being a Knicks fan. It's a struggle, and I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, for y'all, y'all struggle. We don't have a bar. Let's, yeah. let's, <laughs> let's tread lightly right now. We don't have a bar, please. But I think anything that they do, um, they, they need to do something that's outside, outside of the box. And I think when, when it comes term to just the way the team plays, it starts with the top. So yeah. if your management and your just your coaches, your GMs are doing the same old tricks and same old things, it's going to result to the same just losing <laughs> record that it, we always right, see. Yeah. 
So I think it's um, a great change for sure. They did something today that was outside the box. They traded um, Marquis Morris for Mo Harkless. If that if that makes you feel good. Well, it, it was outside the box too because <laughs> they got another first round pick. Yeah. yeah. You know. So yeah. Again, you know the Knicks. I I will never. I I pride myself on giving you guys the facts. So I'm not gonna blindly <laughs> sit here and be like, oh, I'm a Knicks fan and everything we do is the greatest. No, we do a lot of terrible things. Mm -hmm. But we do have That's seven true. first round picks over the next four years. Yeah. We do have a lot of cap space. So if Leon Rose can come in and work this thing the right way, we're going to have opportunities. Yeah. Now, let's see what we do with those opportunities. Yeah. But at yeah. least we're in the discussion that we know we have some flexibility and we can do some things. Yeah. Smush Parker here, formerly up to Los Angeles Lakers. And you are now tuned in to Real Fans, Real Talk. This is Deontay the Bronze, Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world. And you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. <laughs> 